Before we get into the drivetrain of the lathe, I'd like to discuss the uh, motor mounting uh, system. The plate that the motor and transmission, you can see the transmission beyond, mount to is a half inch steel plate that has all the necessary mounting uh, holes, including these little socket head cap screws you can see right there that actually bolt it to these arms. These arms are front and back that uh, support the motor and transmission uh, together. The Those rails that go side to side, as you can see them both front and back, are uh, held on through these slotted plates, as you can see there. If we take a look from the side, they are mounted to the lathe through the bolts that hold the mending plates to the frame. Uh, as you can see, they are slotted there. The slots are pretty obvious. This is to adjust the tension on the belt. And um, right now, the belt at its lowest position is, uh, is when it's tight. So we have a little bit of adjustment up and down, and you can see that is the clearance to the frame of the machine. So uh, it's a system that works quite well as far as stability and support. Uh, the only little hiccup is because the plate uh, rails and motor and transmission combined are quite heavy, uh, probably about 150 pounds. It is difficult to maneuver it uh, by yourself. So the uh, what I use is I use a uh, I put a jack right on the floor and I can jack it up and down as needed to adjust belt tension. Uh, it is only an issue when uh, putting the belt on on the first time or any replacement belts. It's something that uh, that. Uh, is not going to be encountered often, but uh, when it is, it is. Uh, it requires the use of a jack. One of the other more common questions is, what motor do you have in that lathe, and uh, how powerful is it? Well, the motor is only one and a half horses, and as you can see, it is located directly below the spindle. Uh, that is a very common orientation uh, relationship between the spindle and the motor. However, the reality is that where the motor is located doesn't really matter. In my case, it's just made for a more compact design, considering that the footprint of the lathe is so wide. Um, we will go and take a look from the side. This is the heart of the lathe. It is surprisingly a uh, small motor. Most uh, most people that ask about it are surprised that it is so small. It is only one and a half horses. I know that the fashion now is to build a lathe with three and five horsepower, but the reality is for the the purpose and the way that this particular lathe was built, one and a half is more than plenty. I have yet to stall this motor. So we have the main drive motor you can see here, which is one and a half horses. In front of it is a Shimpo variable speed adjustable transmission. So it is actually what they call a cone drive. If you're interested in, in looking that up, it's a cone drive transmission. This is an older model that came off of a, of a medical grade uh, treadmill. I picked it up for a hundred bucks, very inexpensive, uh, only because I didn't know I could use it and I negotiated it. For 100 bucks, these usually go between 1500 to 2000 dollars. So it was a good buy, works great for my lathe, um, and uh, and it's uh, more torque than I can than I actually need. Uh, the motor uh, goes is as you can see, it's coupled by a 56C face, and it outputs on the other side. Uh, this little uh, transmission produces anywhere between 50 to 250 inch pounds of torque much more than the motor by itself can produce, which is why I didn't need a three or five horsepower motor. So when it's running in the low RPMs, it's about 250 pounds of torque. When it's running in the high RPMs, which is a thousand is max, is a uh, is 50 uh, inch pounds. So pretty good there. This here is a one uh, 20th horsepower um, motor with a gearbox. And you can actually see this little chain and sprocket. Let me get in a little closer. So the way this transmission is controlled uh, to, to change the speed, normally there's a knob right here. And that knob you would manually turn to change the speed of the lathe only when the motor is running. 
Uh, I got lucky when I got this one. It already came with this gear motor attached to it to remotely affect the speed of the gearbox. So the only thing I had to do, which is on the other side, and that's what this little strap is holding, is add a capacitor. And I had to wire the capacitor so that I can run this motor in both directions. So not a big deal, but you can see there's the chain. It's a little chain. Um, and, and the sprocket on the, and on the gearbox. Let's see here. You can actually see that it also has a sprocket on it. These little red boxes up here, if I can get, there you go. That little bit red box is a micro switch. There's one over there and there's one over here. Uh, there's a finger you can see right there. This uh, sends a signal to my box. It lets me know when I'm at each extreme of speed. So when I'm approaching zero, it's, it triggers a light. And uh, when I'm approaching 1000 RPM, it triggers a light. And that lets me know that I'm very close to uh, exceeding the mechanical capability of that uh, transmission uh, and stop shy of, of damaging it.